Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamerica.com here, and today I've got your complete in at the review of the Wahoo Ticker and Ticker X heart rate straps. Uh, now I've been using these straps for a couple months, so I've got a pretty good idea on what works well and what doesn't work, so honestly they, they work fine. Um, which isn't a spoiler, because there's lots of new features. Well, there's like three new features, which is all that matters here. Uh, now there is the ticker, which is 49 bucks, and then there's a the ticker X, which is 79 bucks. Uh, the ticker is just your kind of generic broadcasting AMP plus AMP Bluetooth smart heart rate strap. However, the new feature on this is that it now can do concurrent Bluetooth smart connections, up to three, in fact, plus unlimited AMP plus connections, versus the new ticker X has the ability to broadcast AMP plus running dynamics. So if you've got a Garmin watch or really just a Garmin watch, uh, then you can go ahead and receive those running dynamics, running efficiency metrics into that watch. Uh, beyond that, they've increased the battery life and the storage of the Ticker X. So from 350 hours up to 500 hours of actually both the Ticker and the Ticker X. And then the storage from up to 16 hours to 50 hours on the Ticker X. So with that storage, the Ticker X has the ability to let you go out into the woods or whatever, wearing just the heart rate strap uh, and record your heart rate and then download it and save it off to some site later on. Uh, so with that, let's get right into the unboxing. Uh, there are three units here, but the Ticker is just basically offered in two colors, a white and a black. The black is called Stealth though, not white. Uh, so here we go. Let's just zoom this out a little bit, a little bit too close for comfort there. Uh, so. This is the ticker. Uh, we'll take off that little plastic piece right there. And you can see on the back, your CR2032 battery, uh, pretty generic across the board. This is that 500 hours of battery life. And then in here is your strap. And then below that is the manual. The manual says in a bunch of different languages, if you kill yourself doing something, it's definitely your fault, which is probably accurate. Um, and then the quick start guide, simply tells you how to put a heart rate strap on. Uh, I'm gonna assume you know how to do that. I'm gonna assume at this stage in your adult life, um, you know how to put a heart rate strap on. Uh, but what's notable on the new tickers is this right here. It's a little bit cleaner of a back panel. Uh, so you can see right there, if I go like this, it's nice and smooth compared to an older ticker. It's got that kind of uh, not as smooth arrowish look. Um, now, Wahoo makes two claims in the marketing material. Number one is that it is 10% thinner. Um, I'm here to tell you that's not the case. I've got this handy dandy little doohickey. Uh, so I can go ahead and open it up, close it up right there. And this comes in at 11.6 or so um, millimeters. It's, and then this one here, Go back and zero that hip and slide it open. It comes in at 11.95 millimeters. So it's actually thicker, it's not thinner. So that's that. Uh, they also claim it's the lightest heart rate strap available. I assume by available, they mean uh, anywhere. Uh, so in this case, I double check that. It's supposed to be weighing 46 grams and it does indeed weigh 46 grams to give you that bit of a spoiler. If I get this to fit on there, come on, fit, fit. Fit. There we go, 47 grams, 46 grams uh, in that ballpark. And then if we go ahead and measure something else, the thing is, I've got a couple of heart rate straps. I mean, not like an excessive collection, I don't think, at this juncture, uh, and we might get there eventually, but I've got a couple. So given I've got this couple of heart rate straps, I went digging. And what I found was that, uh, first off, the original Wahoo ticker, if you weigh that, um, is also less than the new one. So that's kind of an unfortunate thing in the whole scheme of being the lightest strap out there. Uh, and then the Sunto uh, strap right here weighs less than all of them. Uh, so again, roll this up, 42 grams. Uh, so that's less. Uh, and then there's other straps that are equal or, or less as well. So I'm not really sure about that claim. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Like, I mean, it's sort of just one of those things I wanted to poke fun at because it deserves to be poked fun at, uh, but it, you're not gonna care. It's it's super light, it feels light, uh, and that's that. Um, so let's talk about connectivity. So you've got this strap here. This is the uh, base ticker right there. Uh, and once you go ahead and snap this in, you will see the LEDs should light up. At the top there, I'm just gonna give it a quick rub. And there we go, those are the new LEDs. They've moved them from the center up to the top, uh, make it a little bit easier to see when you're looking down like this. Makes total sense. Uh, and one of the cool things is that it connects across AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart, but in particular, multiple Bluetooth Smart connections. So first off, we're gonna add the AMP Plus connection right here. We're gonna go heart rate, heart rate sensor found, but not the one you think it is. You gotta wait to find a new one. Uh, and that's my old one, that's the whip strap right there. And you can see ticker, heart rate right there. I'll add that sensor. 
and then we'll wait a second and we'll be good to go here. Uh, now, the same is true on a Wahoo Roam. I've got this one right over here, in fact. I had to unplug it. I was getting a bit low on, on battery there on this. Uh, and you can see down below there, ticker right there. Click on more, and there we go, 8865 uh, as well. Uh, so it works just fine there. It works just fine on this, this Garmin watch. But what's fun, though, is to do the Bluetooth smart side of things. Uh, so we're going to go to a bit of B-roll. I first got it paired up on my Apple TV over there on Zwift. And then I'm going to add it in using Trainer Road on my iPad right here. Uh, and you can see also this is my second Bluetooth smart connection now. Uh, and then I'm at a third connection using Sufferfest on my iPhone. Uh, so three current Bluetooth smart connections plus the Garmin and the Wahoo uh, devices over AMP+. Plus. Oh, hey, and a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting or useful or something, just go ahead and whack that like button down at the bottom there right now. It really does help out this video and the channel quite a bit. But beyond that, we have the Ticker X, keeping this show moving quickly and briefly. Uh, so the Ticker X is somewhere over here. Uh, by the way, I'll give you a quick threesome shot of all three of these straps. So we have right here, that is the base ticker. And then we have the white version of the base ticker. And then we have the ticker X. Uh, the straps just go in different direction, but obviously it's just connects on both sides. Uh, you can see the X right there on that strap. Otherwise identical from a shell and everything else standpoint, no difference there at all. Uh, but the ticker X has storage and with that storage, what's called device free workouts. So the ability to put the strap on, go out into the forest, hopefully with clothes on, but perhaps not, uh, and to record your heart rate. It does not record anything else though. So just the heart rate. And then once you've got that heart rate, uh, that workout. So as soon as you put it on, it starts recording, starts creating that file on this. Uh, and then as soon as you take it off, it stops that file. But what's cool is that after the fact, you can download that, sync that workout to your phone. And then from there, you can even trim that workout. So let's take this workout right here where I've got too much stuff at the beginning where I'm just, you know, getting ready for my ride. Uh, and I go out and do my ride. And then afterwards, I got the stuff where I went, like took a shower, et cetera. Before I got to the shower, I took it off. And so you got this whole time period uh, that's just useless. So I can trim that in. And then I can, from there, save it and upload it to platforms like Strava or Training Peaks or et cetera. Uh, keeping in mind, does not include cycling data or GPS data or stuff like that unless you pair it to the app. Uh, now, when you pair it to the app, that's when you get the ability to get GPS data in or the running dynamics data in. Uh, so before we get to running dynamics, let's talk indoor cycling cadence. Uh, so with the Ticker X, uh, this is all from here on out, Ticker X only. Uh, with the Ticker X, you've got the ability to get that indoor cycling cadence. So I can put the strap on uh, and then we'll broadcast across AMP Plus as well as Bluetooth Smart your cycling cadence. And I tested that across a broad range of cadences uh, and it worked from 47 RPM up to approximately 141 RPM. No problems like sprints, slow, all that kind of stuff. It was spot on, exactly accurate. Uh, above and below those points, it dropped out, but those are pretty rare points to be honest. Uh, and again, it's both AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart. The one catch I had was it didn't seem to work with the Peloton digital app. I tried that for the fun of it, because that would be like the perfect use case for that, where you just can only use a heart rate and a cadence sensor with just the app side of it, not the bike. Uh, and it connected, but it wouldn't show me anything for cadence. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Hopefully they'll be able to sort that out. But otherwise, like it does exactly what it says for cadence. The next piece is running. So within the running side, there are two components. One is it will broadcast itself out as a AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart Foot Pod, uh, just as it always did. So you can jump on a treadmill, you can get your heart rate, you can get your pace, you can get your cadence, uh, which is pretty cool. But the new feature for the 2020 version is the ability to get uh, AMP Plus Run Dynamics. So what's interesting about this is once I dig up my watch, there we go here, and I go into the Run Sport, uh, I've just paired this as a simple heart rate strap. I'm now gonna rub this thing and get this all ready to roll here. But I paired it as a simple heart rate strap, and what'll happen as soon as it shows connected, there we go, heart rate connected, and give a couple more seconds and we'll recognize that running dynamics data in there. And if I go on down here, we'll see it show up probably any second now, give it, come on. And there we go, the two running dynamics pages. These are the default pages, it just happens automatically. Uh, and then down below again there, vertical ratio. Uh, now I went out for a run on these and these metrics were virtually identical to the Garmin. I used an HRM try, but it's the same as an HRM run uh, from a metric standpoint, except one thing, GCT balance, ground contact time balance is not shown on the Wahoo strap. I don't know why I asked Wahoo, they just didn't uh, account for doing the, the math on that, I guess. So that is a minor thing. Again, the grand scheme of things, I'm not sure what you're using running dynamics metrics for anyways. Uh, trust me, I've written all about it, I've tried. 
after like five or six years now, I've kind of just given up on um, finding a use for them. Uh, but if you want them, they're there, just not that one metric. I also compared I also compared side by side accuracy between this and the Garmin strap, uh, and in that case, they were virtually identical. Like there were some slight differences there, but that could be accounted for the difference in placement of the strap or whatever the case is. I don't know which one's right or wrong, but they're pretty close to each other. You can also see this running efficiency metric information on the Wahoo app uh, as well. So if you're on a treadmill, that's more practical than if you're outdoor holding your phone like I was trying to, trying to see it. But for this next one, I'm gonna go ahead and put on the strap first. Now this is the double tap functionality. Uh, what that allows me to do here is to go ahead and configure what happens when I double tap the sensor. So I'm gonna go down here and there's double tap. You can choose a sport profile. This is just for the app itself though. I'm gonna choose exercise bike uh, and I've got it set up for lap, which means when I do this, it should take a lap. Now here we see my heart rate and in theory, I can just double tap it and it'll produce a lap, um, which it did, which is nice because it's failed doing that on every demo I've done thus far. Uh, usually it just doesn't work. I don't know if I'm hitting it too hard or there you go, it didn't work on that time, but uh, now it did. Uh, again, it's kind of really variable. It's nice that it works two times in a row, but a lot of times it doesn't. Uh, this only works with the Wahoo app. It doesn't work with third parties like a Garmin or something like that. Uh, so it's just the Wahoo app itself. Uh, which gets us to the last thing is aside from the accuracy of the double tap, um, what about the accuracy of the strap? Uh, now, as I said, I've got months of data on this and it's pretty boring. Uh, like every, every activity I did was spot on. I tested against basically all of this stuff here. I tested against half a dozen watches. I tested against armbands, optical sensors, all sorts of things. I've got endless data sets and only once ever uh, did I have a problem. In the first 10 minutes, it was low. I ended up adding some wetness to the strap. I basically liked it. Uh, and then it was good at that point, which is the same as all these straps here. They work the same way. If there's not enough uh, connectivity in them, then you're not gonna get that uh, heart rate strap. That's one of the only challenges of chest straps. Uh, but once I did that, it was fine and, and I was good to go. If you want to see some of that data though, or more of that data, you can click on the link down in the description there. Plenty more of that data right there. Okay, there you go. A complete look at the new Wahoo Ticker and Ticker X 2020 edition, I guess. There's no official name on that, but that's what they are. Uh, I've got my full in-depth review as well down in the description if you want to check out that for even more details that I could possibly include in this uh, video right here. Otherwise, go ahead and whack that like button if you found this interesting, useful, or something, or hit subscribe for more sports technology goodness. I think we've got some more good stuff coming up next week and well actually over a lot of weeks here as companies start to kind of wake up a little bit and get new things out. With that, have a good one.